we're going to pay particular attention to delayed drowning. I need to explain this particular type of drowning before we look at the first case study. Delayed drowning is oftentimes a result of a near drowning. Um, it's sometimes called secondary drowning because when water enters into the lungs, it's that water that prevents the cells from circulating O2 and expelling CO2 gas. So it's this compromise of biological changes in the lung, in both lungs, uh, after a near drowning incident. Now, it's very common for individuals in this near drowning situation. Um, they can pull themselves out of the water, they act normally, they go to their family, and then towards the onset of that particular event afterwards, um, the individual may not feel too great, may have a headache, just wants to be a little sleepy, or if there is a near drowning, they're resuscitated, they survive for about 24 hours, and they're, like, like I said before, they're conscious, they, they can speak to you, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. But within that time frame afterwards, that chemical process that happens in the lungs and the biological process, uh, it is interfered. And oftentimes that can start relating to or resulting in electrolyte disturbances, edema, uh, pneumonitis. So again, it's the body's ability to bring in O2, circulate that, and expel CO2. It's that process in this delayed drowning that is compromised. 